Hello, everyone. How is everybody doing today? Welcome to the Mega Retirement Webinar. My name is Jeremy, and I am going to be the host for tonight. I will be introducing Adam. Um, for those of you who don't know, he is one of the leading gold evangelists and retirement experts in the nation. For the last five years, he has dedicated to his life to educating uh, current retirees, future retirees, investors, anybody who is concerned or who's looking at the future and wondering what in the world did they do. It's no surprise that this is the most dynamic markets we've ever been in. There are more economic factors influencing the day-to-day -day movements of the stock market than ever before. And Adam has made it his mission to educate people. He's also the co-founder of the number one rated precious metals firm in America by TrustLink. And this is two years in a row, uh, soon to be three. An absolutely phenomenal track record and a dynamite precious metals firm uh, out of Los Angeles. He's also the author of Gold is Better Way. What is Gold is Better Way? I know that it is all you guys have seen the logos. It was on all of the webinar registration pages. I'll tell you in just a second. And he's also the creator of the world's first ever, this is the first ever, and you're going to see it live tonight, first ever gold retirement education platform. And this presentation that Adam's about to put on is the opinions of the author, Adam Barada, and is based on his book, Gold is a Better Way. Hello. I want to thank everyone for being here tonight. I do know how busy schedules can be, uh, and I want to commend you for taking the time to be here. Time is the most valuable commodity, and I hope to be able to add some real value in the short period of time we have tonight. Uh, I believe information is power, and if you are here, you are looking for answers. Uh, you've come to the right place. Uh, the information you get tonight you will not find in one place anywhere else in the world. Uh, I believe it's quite powerful and that after seeing this, you will want to take uh, action. Uh, the challenge today is where do we even go to get good information? Uh, in today's world of fake news, uh, Google searches where algorithms are designed to feed us what we already believe polarized viewpoints from the left and the right, where do we even go to get balanced, even, fair, true, real information? Um, you know, I think a major part of the problem is that we are all smart. This smartphone has a thousand times more computing power than the computer that launched the Apollo spacecraft. We get an onslaught of news, push notifications, updates, instant gratification in today's world. You know, the word investing in this environment has become skewed. Not many people think long term anymore. People don't think five, seven years down the road. They're thinking five days down the road. We've actually become a nation of day traders. Now, I'm sure you don't want to hear this, but the American economy is very sick. We are $21 trillion in debt. We will have $1 trillion deficits each of the next three to four years. We will be $25 trillion in debt by 2021. Interest rates are rising and the cost to service this debt are about to soar. Geopolitical risks have never been greater. We are in the middle of a currency war and trade wars. Pension funds across the country are more than 50% underfunded. Social Security is going to run out of money in 15 years. Our healthcare system is in disarray. At the worst time when the population boom, the baby boomers, who, by the way, are living an extra five years longer, will need more health care services than any population previously. Only one in three Americans has enough money to last them through the end of their lives. And yet somehow, with all of this obvious risk, volatility is at an all-time low. 
stock and bond markets, real estate markets, the uh, fine art markets are all at all time highs. Nobody seems to be looking ahead or remembering the wisdom taught over and over and over from the past. Uh, I'm reminded by a great line by Warren Buffett. He says, our markets have 10 year cycles. It's a shame we only have seven year memories. Well, we are at the end of a cycle. Winter is coming. I want to show you how you can prepare for it. Now, Wall Street is not going to share this with you. They don't want you to know this. Wall Street wants us to own stocks and bonds, buy and hold, and stay the course. Well, the reality is that our markets have cycles. There's a birth, a growth, a contraction, and a death. Winter, spring, summer, fall, a beginning, and a middle, and an end. The tide comes in, the tide goes out. Night follows day. Everything has a cycle. And it begs a very important question. If markets have cycles and go up and down, how can staying the course always be good advice? It's good advice when markets are expanding, terrible advice when markets are contracting. And as a storyteller, I am fascinated by cycles, by the beginning, the middle, and the end. And I really believe that my talent is being able to see and communicate the whole story. Uh, as you know, I have written a book called Gold is a Better Way. Uh, it's intended to be far more than literal advice to buy gold. Uh, I believe that the title, Gold is a Better Way, is about a movement, uh, a metaphor for sound investing, a mantra for a return to wisdom. I want to tell you something. Gold is not a smart investment. It's not a trade. Gold is a wise investment. It's a position to hold. And those that get wise now and get gold at this point in the business cycle, I believe will see outsized returns in the coming years. Now our markets have seasons. When it's summertime, we probably want to wear more t-shirts and swim trunks. In the winter, we need heavier, more protective clothing. Uh, our investments are the same way. They should be tailored to where we are in the cycle. And yet most unwise investors are still investing at this as if it's summertime blindly wearing the same investment strategies they've been wearing for the last seven years. They are completely unaware that we are in late fall and winter is coming and that we are in the middle of the everything bubble. Stocks are overvalued at all time highs on a 10 year bull run, the longest bull run in history. Bonds are overvalued and have been fueled by nearly nine years worth of 0% interest rates. This has allowed real estate to hit all time highs. There was a Da Vinci that was even questionable as to whether it was even real that sold for half a billion dollars in the last year. And what makes matters worse is that stocks and bonds are more correlated than at any time in history and are due for a massive pullback. How did we get here? Okay, it's a great question because um, how, did, how did markets get to this inflated levels? Well, it actually wasn't very difficult. Uh, in 2009, central banks lowered interest rates to 0% and then printed over $20 trillion around the globe. Corporations then borrowed massive amounts of money for free, and mostly they bought back their stock. See, this process juices up their share prices and elevates valuations into thin air. And this image here, these four guys, will show you how easy this is. Let's say each of these four guys was an owner in a company that was worth a million dollars and each of their shares was worth $250,000.
If the company buys back one of the shares, there's now three owners sharing in a million dollar company. The company doesn't have to grow the business. They don't have to do anything to drive better revenues or become more profitable. No, simply through financial engineering, they can manipulate their share price higher by simply buying back their stock. Now stocks are up 300% from the bottom in 2009. Apple just hit a $1 trillion valuation. Did you know that 42% of that of Apple's growth is attributed to their share buyback program over the last five years? In fact, 60% of all of the growth in the markets can be attributed to stock buybacks. Let me say that again. 60% of all of the growth over the last five years can be attributed to stock buybacks. This is financial engineering. It's what happens when the Fed lowers interest rates. This chart shows you the Fed funds rate. See, it was ultra low interest rates that have fueled the financial bubble. But as you can see here, we are in the midst of an environmental shift. Interest rates are rising, central banks are tightening, and what has been warm weather for investors for nearly a decade is about to get very cold in the coming years. As this, as this continues, you will see stocks and bonds fall. And I believe you'll see gold and other commodities dramatically outperform. Now, I know what you're asking. Why would I want to own gold? Gold hasn't done anything for five years, right? This is while at the same time, financial assets have exploded. Financial assets are up 300%. Commodities, precious metals, tangible real assets are down 40%. Gold has traded in a range from 1100 to 1300 during this time. It's gone nowhere. It's terrible, right? Gold is an awful investment. Wall Street tells you don't buy gold. Stocks where you want your money to go. I want to start with numbers that get me fired up and why I'm so passionate about this subject. Uh, I'm going to go into the platform now. Uh, and as you can see here, I'm going to compare gold to the Dow Jones. And we're going to pick a date range from 2000 to 2018. This is how gold has performed to the stock market over the last 18 years. Gold was $250 an ounce in the year 2000. Today it's about 1225. The stock market, the Dow was at 11,700 points. Today it's about 25,000. You can see that the Dow has gone up about 2.2x, while gold has gone up 4.3x. That's right. Stocks and bonds, which is what uh, Wall Street tells us we should own, stocks have gotten beaten by gold 4 to 3. Okay, The total return here, which you can see right here on your screen, uh, is that you reinvested all of the dividends from and all of your uh, earnings from the Dow, and you'd have a total return of $328,000. Is a $100,000 investment has returned $328,000 versus $428,000 if you bought gold. But people pay attention because the stock market has never been higher, and gold is down $700 an ounce. The book I've written is called Gold is a Better Way. It's proven to be that over time. And it's about to become even more obvious to investors over the next several years. Now, if you knew that the future and total return of the Dow over the next decade would be 0%, would you change your strategy? Before I get into why I believe that is exactly about to what's, uh, ex exactly what's about to occur, there are three main principles I want everyone to understand. Number one, easy credit leads to asset bubbles. 
Number two, it's the tightening of credit that causes asset bubbles to pop. And number three, paper assets do very well in a lowering interest rate environment. They do terribly as interest rates drive higher. As I mentioned, I believe my talent is in telling the whole story. Uh, I'm also aware of the medium. Everything you're gonna see tonight, I've gone into great detail in my book and my member platform. In the late 1990s, there was a dot-com boom as investors chased higher valuations in the stock market. It was all supported by lower interest rates and cheap money fueled the bubble and the people cheered. By the year 2000, as interest rates went higher, the bubble popped. Stock market investors would lose 47% of their money over the course of the next 18 months. As money flowed out of equities, it flowed into gold. Gold would go from $250 per ounce to $650 per ounce over the next few years. During the 2000s, there was a housing boom as investors chased higher valuations in both the housing and stock markets. It was all supported by even lower interest rates and cheap money fueled the bubble. And the people cheered! By the year 2008, interest rates went higher as homeowners defaulted on their loans and the bubble popped. Oh, man. Millions of homeowners were forced out of their homes and stock market investors would lose more than half their money as the stock market collapsed. Gold would go from $700 per ounce to $1,900 per ounce over the next few years. Which brings us to today. Over the last several years, the stock market has exploded, going from 12 times earnings in 2009 to roughly 30 times earnings today. It has all been supported by even lower interest rates, and cheap money has fueled the bubble. And today, the people cheer! But interest rates are rising again, and this bubble too, soon, will pop. How much will investors lose this time around? How high will gold go then? So let's get started. The story I want to tell you is the story that's happening right now about our patient, also known as the American economy. The first act is from 1982 to the year 2000. The second act is from 2000 to 2018, and the last act is what's going to happen over the next seven to 10 years. The first act is one when the patient is strong and growing. The second act is about when the patient is sick and weak. And the third act is what's coming over the next several years as the patient dies. Now I'm going to be using imagery from the book and from calculators from the site to help tell this story. So act one, from 1982 to the year 2000 when American economy was healthy. As you can see here, this is a stock chart from 1982 to 2000. If you look at this chart, I want you to notice something. You see how it goes up on a nice 45 degree angle? Maybe little pullbacks here, here and there, but overall uh, the stock market just seems to go higher over time. Let's go into the platform and take a look. This is a Dow Jones, $100,000 investment from 1982 to the year 2000. You can see 1982 to the year uh, to 1999, 1231, and let's hit calculate. As you can see, the Dow went up 1,200% during this period of time. A $100,000 investment in the stock market gave you $1.3 million if you just let it ride. Okay, but that wasn't just stocks that did well during this time. Bonds also performed well during this time. As you can see here, this allows you to compare gold to the 10-year treasury. Again, 1982 to the year 2000. 
I hit the calculate button and what you'll see. Bonds did very well during this time as well. Notice that the 10 year treasury average yield was 8.18% during this time. It was during this time that we learned how to invest, buy stocks and bonds, buy and hold, stay the course. Interest rates averaged 8% a year. The stock market averaged 15% per year. It reminds me to talk about the rule of 72. If you don't know what the rule of 72 is, it's a simple compound interest formula. It's what all of Wall Street is built on. And the rule of 72 tells us how long it will take our money to double at what interest rate. And this is how it works. You take the number 72, divide it by the interest rate, you'll get the number of years it takes your money to double. Okay, it was during this time where you, the idea of the rule of 72 is put your money in the market and double it every seven years. And these are the numbers. Stocks averaged 15%. Bonds averaged 8%. The blended average of holding a very safe mixture of stocks and bonds was 10% per year. 72 divided by 10 meant you doubled your money every 7.2 years. Now, you got to know why this happened. See, in 1982, there was a population explosion. Baby boomers. Baby boomers hit 36 years old at this time. Now, the peak earning years for any individual are between the ages of 36 and 52. This is when we are the most productive. At the age of 36 is also around when we begin investing for the future. So you have more people making more money than ever before, all now starting to get into their most productive and investing years. But there's an even bigger story happening alongside this. It's the creation of the 401k. See, prior to this time, if you were an employee, you had a pension or a defined benefit plan. You didn't get to choose where you put your money. The company did that for you. And in the early 80s, corporations were able to get this obligation off of their books and put it into the individual hands of their employees. Anyone out there who's got a 401k, a 403b, a TSP, a 403a, any type of retirement account knows that the options we are given inside these plans are mostly mutual funds all tied to the stock market. So if you're thinking about this, you have more people making more money than ever before, all of whom each and every week contributing to the retirement account in the form of mutual funds, all tied to the stock market. It was a self-replicating loop that fueled the greatest stock market boom in history. It was also fueled by interest rates that went from 18% in 1982 to 6% in the year 2000. And here are the general numbers. GDP growth averaged 4% per year. Our debt to GDP ratio averaged 60% per year. And the Cape Shiller PE multiple averaged 15 times earnings. The conclusion is it was a great time to own stocks and bonds. And as you can see here, if you bought the Dow during this time and left it all in stocks, your 100,000 was worth $1.3 million. If you put your money in bonds, you went up 4X as interest rates allowed you to double your money. Notice that gold got pummeled. In fact, gold lost 27% during this time. In fact, it's when the idea of putting five or 10% of your portfolio in gold as insurance was created, in case there was some crazy, weird, crazy collapse, okay? In a growth environment, you don't want gold. In a growth environment, you want stocks and bonds. And that brings us to the end of Act One. And we start now Act Two. Act Two takes place from 2000 to today. 
over the last 18 years. If you look here at this stock chart, you can see a much different chart pattern. See, no longer does it just go up on a steady incline. Now we have boom and bust, boom and bust, boom and, well, a lot of people are worried that there's a bust that comes next. So let's see how stocks and bonds have done over the last 18 years. As you can see here, I'm clicking from January of 2000 to today. And what you'll notice is the stock market is still going higher. As we looked, you can see that the Dow Jones, you put $100,000 in, you got a total return of about $328,000. That's a about 3.3x on your money. By the way, that's if you reinvested every single penny, never took a dividend, and never paid a fee. By the way, nobody has this option. No fund manager beats the index over time, and so 3.3x is really a lot closer to 2.75x. Gold, 428,000 on your $100,000. These numbers are with gold down 40% and the stock market at all time highs as we speak. But okay, maybe bonds did better. Let's take a look at how bonds do versus gold during the same period, 2000 to 2018. I hit the calculate button and we can see bonds also did okay. Your $100,000 in bonds worth about $285,000. Of course, gold way outperforms bonds. So as I talk to you right now, we are in the highest flying stock market uh, information. Stocks and bonds are at all time highs, and yet gold has dramatically outperformed them over an 18 year span. See, it was an economy that's been built on debt an economy built on debt, you're gonna find gold dramatically outperforms paper. And here are the underlying fundamentals. GDP growth averaged 2.2%, not 4%. The debt to GDP ratio was 105%, not 60%. Stocks grew at an average of 5.9% per year not 15% like they had prior. And bonds averaged three and a half percent on the 10-year treasury, not over 8% like they did in the 18 years prior. The blended average of owning stocks and bonds from 2000 to 2018 has been four and a half percent a year. The rule of 72 shows us that the Amount of time it takes your money to double is 16 years. That's compared to seven years in the 18 years prior. See, we had an economy fueled by debt. And an economy fueled by debt, owning stocks and bonds is not nearly as strong and good for you as owning tangible real assets. The title of my book is called Gold is a Better Way. Obviously, from these numbers, gold has been a better way. And nobody is owning gold. Everybody is following the tried and true own stocks and bonds strategy that worked in the 80s and 90s. It's working a lot less now. Gold has been a far better performing asset. And here's why. When you have an economy built on debt, you get seizures. In the year 2000, we had a dot-com collapse. It wiped out 43% of value in 34 months. In the year 2008, we had a housing collapse. It wiped out 57% in 16 months. And in the year 2000, the doctor, the Federal Reserve, they had to step in and prescribe medication after the dot-com collapse. They lowered interest rates to 1%. Rates hadn't been this low since the Great Depression, and it created the housing boom. 
and you might remember it, investors were able to refinance their homes at lower and lower and lower interest rates and use their homes like ATM machines. And it worked. It reflated the economy. Stocks got back to where they were. By 2008, we were back at levels they were at 2000. Unfortunately, it was built on debt. And what happened was loans were given to subprime borrowers. The financial system took advantage of this. Banks, uh, Wall Street got greedy, gave loans to people who never should have had them. And of course, as interest rates go higher, the bubble pops. Remember, I said the key to understanding this is easy credit leads to asset bubbles. It's the tightening of credit that causes those bubbles to pop. And in 2008, the bubble popped so hard, so big that the Federal Reserve had to step in with a defibrillator. They literally had to shock the economy back into uh, to, to breathing, to, to otherwise it was gonna fall off into the abyss. And what did the Federal Reserve doctor do? The Federal Reserve doctor lowered interest rates to 0%. They made money free and it wasn't enough. In order to keep the patient alive, the Federal Reserve printed $4 trillion of new money supply. Where did all this money go? Well, it went one place. Okay, it all went to the stock market. And that's what I wanna show you right now. The chart at the top of your screen represents the amount of money that has been printed since 2008. It represents central banks printing of assets and, and ultimately they do this through a process called quantitative easing. The the, the, the central banks buy bonds, they sit on their balance sheet, and this represents the money printed. Now, slide number two shows us the stock market relative to the amount of money printed. Okay, that's the money printed. Let's take a look at the stock market. See this gold jagged line? That's the stock market. So you can see the stock market has increased almost identically hand in glove to the amount of money that has been printed. And then, to make matters even better, in 2016, Congress got in on the act. In addition to all of this monetary stimulus, Congress added a one and a half trillion dollar tax cut. They then passed an omnibus bill that will add trillion dollar deficits each of the next three to four years. And all of this stimulus, all of this prescription, all of this medication has worked. Markets are up 40% in the last two years. But the doctor's been, been treating the symptoms and not the root cause. See, in 2008, we suffered a massive debt crisis and a bubble popped because of debt. And what did we do? Well, the Federal Reserve doctor stepped in and prescribed more debt. Our national debt has ballooned from 10 trillion in 2008 to 21 trillion dollars today. And while the patient may seem better, the underlying problem has gotten way worse. But before I move on, I wanna show you a comparison of what a healthy economy looks like versus a sick economy. One is built on growth, the other is built on debt. Stocks and bonds, 10% a year. Stocks and bonds, four and a half percent a year. Gold, minus 27%. Gold, up four and a half times. This is where we've been. And unfortunately, right now, we are in a massive, distorted, huge bubble. 
And if you don't believe me, I now want to take you really inside the platform because the reality is that I've spent a million dollars in the last year of my life building out a platform so you could see all of this. I'm now into the platform and I'm going to go on our dashboard here. Uh, there's a lot of tools, but I'm going to start with uh, the first one, which is the Cape Schiller PE ratio. Now, uh, for those of you who uh, don't know, uh, Robert Schiller is a famous Yale professor, and he created a PE multiple that's now known as the Cape Schiller PE ratio. And what Schiller did was he measured the entire market, going all the way back here, as you can see, all the way back to 1880, and measured the price to earnings ratio of the market, but he did it based against inflation and over 10 years of earnings. And he's come up with what is widely regarded as the best measurement for PE multiples that exists. And he found out a few things. When you can put your money in the market, when multiples are very low, your gains will be very significant. Notice if you put your money here in the, at the beginning of 1920s, when P multiples were at five times earnings, you made a fortune as multiples expanded through the next decade. Once again, if you were lucky enough to be able to put your money in the market when multiples were below 10, starting in World War II, you can see over the next couple decades as uh, multiples expanded, you made significant returns. Anytime, however, you put your money in the market when multiples are high, your long-term gains are terrible. If you put your money here in 66, you see all the way through 1980, you did poorly. Stocks dropped 50% during this time. Here we are again in 1982. It's the beginning of the financial boom. PE multiples were at six and a half times earnings. We've seen how if you put your money in the market here in 1982, over the next 18 years, you saw 13 times your money as multiples expanded. And here's the thing. Schiller realized that anytime you put your money in the market when it's below 10% on the PE multiples, your average return would be 15% a year or more. Anytime you put your money in the market when multiples were between 14 and 18 times earnings, uh, you did average 7% a year. And anytime you put your money in when multiples were over 24, your long-term gains were going to be terrible, negative. The average of this historically is 17 times earnings. And if you put your mouse over the calculate button and hit calculate, we can see real time where we are today. Wow, PE multiples are at 32 times earnings. This is nearly double their historical average. The market is significantly overvalued. But that's just one way to measure stocks. I love Warren Buffett. I love Warren Buffett because he's all about wisdom. And Warren Buffett has some sayings that I love to remind people about. Uh, but Warren Buffett also has an indicator a measurement tool, a metric he uses when he wants to, uh, how he values the overall market. It's become so popular that Warren Buffett, um, it's now become known as the Warren Buffett Indicator. And if you go into this site, you can put over the Warren Buffett Indicator, pull it up on your screen, and you'll see something very interesting. Now, by the way, this is me uh, explaining this on a video. The Warren Buffett Indicator tells us um, what it does is it measures all of the money in the market and compares it to GDP. And he's come up with a very interesting calculation. Anytime the amount of cash invested in the market is below 50% of GDP, our markets are significantly undervalued. Anytime the amount of money in the market is over 115% of GDP, the market is significantly overvalued. And if you click here and click the calculate button, you'll see where we are today. Right now, the Warren Buffett indicator is telling us that markets are massively overvalued. We're at 144% on the Warren Buffett indicator. 
The highest it's ever was was at 151% during the peak of the dot-com boom. So, we are looking at this understanding that markets are very expensive. But let's go a little further into Warren Buffett. See, I like to see not what people say, but what people do. And Warren Buffett's a great guy to follow. Because in the year 2000, or actually in 1999, Warren Buffett famously moved half his money into cash. He did it right at the peak of the dot-com boom. He did it about 15% before the, the peak. Okay, markets wouldn't peak in for like another 10 months until after he took his, half his money out. People thought he was an idiot. Warren Buffett doesn't know what he's doing. He's missing out on all of these gains. And during that time, he short didn't look like the smartest investor. But in 2001, as the market collapsed, Warren Buffett sure looked very wise because he bought everything he liked at a far better price. Interestingly enough, in 2007, he did the exact same thing. This time in February, eight months prior to the housing collapse, Warren Buffett pulled half his money out of the market. He missed the last 12% rise in markets. And again, everyone said, Warren, what are you doing? You're missing out. You're getting, you're, you, why are you pulling out? Again, Warren Buffett wasn't very smart. Turned out to be very wise. And thank God Warren Buffett had the foresight he had because in 2009, he bailed out Bank of America. He bailed out AIG. He bailed out Goldman Sachs. If Warren Buffett didn't have the cash sitting on the sidelines, who knows where our economy would be? Which brings us to today. Where does Warren Buffett have his money today? Well, Warren Buffett, about a year ago, moved half his money to cash. He's now sitting on over $120 billion sitting in a cash position. You gotta ask yourself a question. If Warren Buffett, the greatest investor in history, can't find something he likes to buy, how on earth can you? Anyone who's a baseball fan will remember the 90s and early 2000s, okay? Um, you remember guys that were hitting 20 home runs started hitting 30? Guys that traditionally hit 30 home runs started hitting 45? We didn't know why. We thought maybe athletes were better conditioned because they were working out year round. Another theory was that baseball was juiced and Major League Baseball, you know, created a new ball and that's why it was going out of the ballpark faster. It was only later that we learned that it was the athletes themselves that were juiced. They took steroids. The steroids allowed them to draw better performance allowed them more power and they hit more home runs. In 2007, when they took the steroids out of the game of baseball, an amazing thing happened. The guys that were hitting 70 home runs went back to hitting 45. The guys that were hitting 45 went back to hitting 30. The guys that were hitting 30 went back to hitting 20. It was the steroids that gave them this performance. And this is why I'm so passionate and certain what comes next for all of us is not going to be great. See, what's happening right now is central banks are tightening. They are taking the punch bowl away. The Federal Reserve is raising interest rates and they're letting assets fall off their balance sheet. No longer are we printing money we're now tightening the money supply. You can see it's right here in summertime where asset purchases go net negative and why I believe Q4 is going to be massively rocky for investors, you can see we start letting 20, 30, 40, 50 billion dollars a month come out of the money supply. Isn't it safe to assume that if it was central banks purchasing assets and putting all of that snow on the mountain that caused stocks to go higher, that as we take the snow 
off of the mountain right here, that those assets will come back down. The Cape Schiller has an, a, a historical average of 17 times earnings. It's now at 32. It's about 50% where we are. Can you afford to lose half of your money? This all starts right now. And believe it or not, the signs are right there. The generals are already falling. Facebook is down 20%. This is in one day. Amazon's down 5%. Netflix is down over 20%. Google's down 5%. The FANG stocks, which have carried the market over the last five years, are now falling. And there's a saying that when the generals fall, it's a sign the army will soon follow. But I want to highlight a few things. Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Google are the exact same things as owning gold. See, none of these stocks pay a dividend. The big knock on gold is it doesn't pay a dividend. Well, neither do any of the FANG stocks. So owning gold is just like owning the FANGs. The difference is the FANGs are at valuations that are unheard of. Netflix trades at 250 times earnings. Facebook at 40 times earnings. What that means is you have to wait 250 years if Netflix doesn't grow to get your money out. And on Facebook in this 20% drop, guess what? It happened in the overnight. If you were a uh, left your job, looked at your stock portfolio on Tuesday afternoon, you came back Wednesday morning, it was down 20%. You didn't get to sell it when it was down 3% or 5% or 7% or falling at 10%. No, all of that took place in the after hours. And the only people that have access to the after hours are massive pension funds, hedge funds, big giant investment banks who are able to trade during that time. Now everyone owns the fangs. Facebook is held in every pension fund. Amazon, Netflix, Google are held in every pension fund. When you lose 20% in a day, that means 99% of the people lost. And the value that was lost was $120 billion. Now, understand something. There were a very few people that were wise. See, Facebook is the smart trade. Facebook is the trade. You want to be in these growth stocks. Wisdom tells us that these stocks are massively overvalued and where all the smart people lost all of us 20%. A couple wise guys put $120 billion in their pocket. And that actually brings me to the end of Act 2, which is where we are right now. We are at the end of a debt cycle. We are at the end of a monetary and fiscal stimulus cycle. So let's take a look now at what happens down the road. This is act three. This is from this point forward over the next seven to 10 years. And I just wanna point out some of the headlines that are right now in the headlines that you can expect to see a whole lot more. We've got trade wars breaking out. We've got currency wars breaking out. We've got a demographic implosion. The 10,000 people a day that were coming into the system in the 80s and 90s are now retiring. They're now leaving the system. They're now living five to seven years longer. This is a demographic implosion. It's happening while pension funds are dramatically underfunded. Social Security is out of money and won't have money in 2032. As interest rates rise, you're going to see corporate debt defaults and dollar devaluation. These aren't just tomorrow's headlines. These are headlines from today. And I asked you a question earlier. I said, if you knew that the uh, Dow would return 0% over the next decade, would you change your strategy? Sounds crazy, right? The Dow would never return 0%. Well, let's take a deeper look. Okay, we are going to uh, click on the Dow Jones. 
Uh, we're gonna choose a date range. As you can see here, we're gonna choose from March of 1970 to March of 1980. We will hit the calculate button and see what happened during this decade span. Here's a decade where the Dow returned negative three and a half percent. Don't believe that, that's 40 years ago. That doesn't make any sense, Adam. That's not applicable to today's world. Okay, let's choose another date range. Uh, let's go from 1-1-2000, one, one, uh, one, to 1-1-2010. One, one, Here's another decade. This time, the Dow returned negative 8%. Two of the last five decades have been Dow negative. Three have been Dow boom. The decades where the Dow boomed did average 15%. The decades that it didn't, it averaged dramatically lower, negative. That's why the total return of the Dow is about 7% a year. It's got boom years and down years. Well, we're about to head into a decade, in my opinion, of negative returning Dow. Maybe we're just on the other side of the moon. Markets are cyclical and we're just due for another Dow decade of 0%. I believe this is exactly where we're at and exactly what you can expect. So the question really becomes that at this point, if I can't put my money in stocks because they're overvalued and bonds are overvalued and it's all been inflated because of low interest rates, where do I put my money? Well, this right here is a chart of commodities versus equities. Okay? And I want to highlight something. This is uh, the relationship between commodities and equities over the last 50 years. Now, most of the time, the uh, music, this is like an accordion, okay? Every now and then it gets stretched out to extremes, but most of the time the accordion is playing music here in the middle range, between say three and five, okay? Every now and then, the accordion gets pulled out to its widest extremes, and it's a great time to buy one and sell the other. Notice here, the times when this has been the most stretched in favor of its time to sell equities and buy commodities was here in the early 70s. Gold was $100 an ounce. And by 1980, gold would be $800 an ounce. This while the Dow returned nothing. Again, in the year 2000, you can see that commodities were a great buy relative to equities. Gold would go from $250 an ounce to $1,925 an ounce nearly a decade later. Again, another decade where the Dow returned negative. And here we are again, right here at levels that we've never seen before, actually a notch below where we were in 2000 and a little bit below where we were in the early 70s, as commodities have come down 40% relative to equities. Now, today the price of gold is $1,225 an ounce. If you multiply that by eight, you get to $10,000 an ounce. And I believe that's what you will see over the next decade, is you'll see $10,000 an ounce. And if you're looking for a place to move away from inflated paper assets and the inflated financial assets that are gonna struggle as interest rates go higher, you're gonna find out, have a hard time finding a better place than gold. So what gives gold value? Let's get specific now on gold. Um, see, what you really wanna understand about gold is gold is still the basis of the entire monetary system. See, while we're no longer on a gold standard, gold is still the standard by which our currency is measured because gold is priced in dollars. 
If the dollar gets stronger over time, the price of gold will go down. It'll take less dollars to buy the same amount of gold. If the dollar gets weaker over time, it'll take more dollars to buy the same amount of gold. So gold is simply a referendum on the future value of the dollar. So the question is then, what are the fundamentals of the dollar? Well, the fundamentals of the dollar, of any currency, have three main components. You have money supply, interest rates, and level of national debt. If you can know these three things, you get a pretty good idea of a country's currency. Now, when you add to the supply of something, do you dilute or strengthen it? You dilute it. When you add to the supply of something, you dilute its value. When you lower interest rates, you make a dollar less expensive, not more expensive. So lowering interest rates makes a dollar cheaper, cheaper to borrow. And when you have a soaring national debt, it puts more pressure on that country's ability to pay that debt back. So the three fundamentals of the dollar Money supply has massively expanded. Interest rates have never been lower. Our level of national debt has doubled. Gold should be soaring because these are indicators the dollar should be getting weaker. But gold hasn't soared in value. In fact, gold is down $700 an ounce from its all-time high of 1925. What happened here? Well, let's go back into the site, okay? I'm right now pulling up a chart. It's the future, it's the, uh, the, the, there's four numbers on this screen, okay? This first column is our national debt. The second column is our costs to service the national debt. And the third column is the average price of gold, okay? I want you to notice something. Every year since the year 2000, our national debt has gone higher. We went from $3 trillion in debt in the year 2000 to over $20 trillion ending 2017. Notice in column two that as we increased the cost to service our debt, the price of gold went higher each year. But something interesting happened in 2012. Notice that in 2012, 13, 14, and 15, the cost to service our debt went lower. This was as our debt was going higher, 16 trillion to 18 trillion. Gold went from $1,600 an ounce down to 1,000. This is the average price. What happened here? See, we were able to go further and further and further into debt, and it actually hasn't cost us any more money. Let's take a look. Notice here in 2008, we're $10 trillion in debt. It cost us $450 billion to service that debt, $451. Jump ahead 10 years. 2017, we're over $20 trillion in debt. It's only cost us $458 billion. See, the costs are the same even though we've doubled the debt. Why? Well, the Federal Reserve lowered interest rates to zero and they were able to refinance all of their debt at a lower cost. And in 2008, it cost us about 4.5% on our debt, and today it costs us about 2.25% on our debt. This is a fantastic deal. You can keep adding to your debt as interest rates go lower. Remind anyone of the housing bubble? You kept being able to take more money out of your house by refinancing at a lower price? And that all works until a couple things start to happen. Interest rates rise. Well, we know we just added $1.5 trillion to the debt. We have an omnibus bill that's gonna add a trillion dollars of debt each year over the next few years. So in 2021, we are going to be $25 trillion in debt and the costs to service that debt are about to explode because interest rates aren't going down anymore, they're now going higher. So, the question I have for you is, if our national debt is going higher and interest rates are going up, meaning the cost to service debt is going to go higher, what do you think is going to happen to the price of gold? Do you think it's gonna go higher or lower? 
of course it's going to go higher. And that's why I'm so incredibly passionate about what I'm telling you right now. Now, what's gonna happen is this. Wall Street is going to get in on this act. They're gonna come around and say, no, now it's time to own gold. And you wanna get gold and we can get you gold. We can get it for you in paper. We can get you gold funds. We can get you GDX. Now GDX is the ETF that tracks the gold miners. This is how GDX has performed over physical gold. GDX was created in 2006. It's down 46% over the last 12 years. Physical gold's up 2.3 times that amount. What's going on here? This is what Wall Street wants you to buy right here. This is actual physical gold. Well, maybe the other paper's better. Let's go to GDXJ. That's the junior miners. Let's see how that's performed. Wow, the junior miners are down 71%. This was a fund that was created in 2009 and is down 71% while physical gold is actually positive. You know what? You may have a John Hancock 401k. In that plan, they allow you to own TGLDX. It's the Tocqueville Gold Fund. The Tocqueville Gold Fund over the last 12 years is down 26%. Physical gold, $100,000 investment, $236,000. Not only is this what Wall Street wants you to buy, these are the only options you have inside your IRA and 401k. And this is what Wall Street wants you to buy. So. If you are looking at these things, trying to understand why I am so passionate, please understand a few things. Gold is physical. It's tangible. It is an element. It has been gold for billions of years. It will be gold for billions more. The beautiful thing about the physical gold coin or bar that you buy, it will always be that gold coin or gold bar. The dollar price will vary, but that piece of property will never go away. There's no counterparty risk. There's no risk of permanent impairment. You're not gonna see your gold disappear 20% in the after hours. That gold coin will always be that gold coin. And when markets seize up, like they always do in a debt environment, you're gonna find liquidity crises, you're gonna see markets collapse because of leverage, because of financial engineering, and because this is how Wall Street works. So let's review. The secret to investing is to buy low and sell high. It requires us to sell something high and to buy something low. Now, let's take a look at our current situation. The Cape Schiller Index on P multiples has only been higher at one point in history. The Warren Buffett indicator is at 143%. Equities are up 300% in the last decade, while commodities, metals, tangible physical assets are down 40%. It's a great time to sell something high and to buy something low. And it wraps up the story. Gold is a better way, is about a return to wisdom. Life is cyclical. There's a birth, an expansion, a contraction, and a death. The tide goes in, the tide goes out. Warren Buffett has a great saying about that. He says, only when the tide goes out do you discover who's swimming naked. Well, we'll see who's naked as day turns to night, as fall turns into winter. Winter is coming with stocks at all time highs, with bonds at all time highs, with real estate at all time highs, all due to ultra low interest rates, I have to ask you one last question. If not now, when? 
if you're not going to be a successful investor now and sell something high, when will you? Let's get back to something real. Gold is a better way. Now, I sure hope you've enjoyed this presentation, okay? I am completely committed to what I believe. My company is the first company in the entire country to put our entire pension in physical metals. On page three of my book, I put the price of gold, I put the price of the Dow and the 10-year treasury. I'm not gonna play any games, I'm putting it all out there right in front of you. In fact, if you go on the site, you're gonna get a report card. The report card will allow you to see how you've done over time since you've joined. You'll never have to question this ever. You'll always know. And if I'm wrong, I'm going to get hurt just as bad or worse than all of you. And so I ask you one thing. I want you to join this movement. See, I am so certain of all of this. I want to add massive value to everyone I speak to. My company, Advantage Gold, is the highest rated precious metals firm in the country. Okay. We've grown there by adding value. I've built this site, I've written this book, I wanna give you value. Now all of the things you can do on my site, from the report card, to the calculators, to the comparing gold and silver, to all the future gold price calculators, to the dozens of videos, to the charts and special reports, this is money that I only charge $195 a year for. I have members that tell me they pay thousands of dollars for this information, but I want to make it as accessible as I can to as many people as I can. I want to get this book into as many hands as possible. And so I'm going to make you an offer for coming to this webinar. Right now, for just $19.95, you can pre-order a copy of my book. It doesn't even hit bookstores till August 14th. Here's the link where you can order it. And here's my offer. If you pre-order the book now, you will get instant access to the platform. Instant access to all of the calculators and all of the information you're seeing on this site. I want you to read the book and use the platform and get the truth. And I want you to do it now. Because now if you do it, if you make these moves ahead of the herd, you're going to see outsized gains. If you wait and you don't do it until later, you're going to suffer. You're going to suffer loss and you'll be moving as metals and other tangible assets are more expensive. So I want to give you this offer. I want you to take a look. You can see, again, I'm not hiding behind anything. In fact, I'm going to make you an even better offer. Not only are you gonna get all of this value, not only are you gonna get all of this, I'll even give you the Winter is Coming course. The Winter is Coming is a video lessons of the 10 biggest points from my book broken down into videos. You don't like to read, it's okay. You can just watch the videos. I'm gonna give you all of this value for just $19.95. Okay, you can pre-order the book right now and I'm doing this for a very important reason. See, my business has grown by adding value. We're the highest rated company in the country. And the more value we add, the more our business has grown. And if after receiving all of this value, you decide precious metals make sense for you, I hope you'll consider using my company. We do it very well. In the end, it doesn't matter who you get your gold from, just get as much of it as you possibly can right now. And on that note, and uh, thank you all for being part of this presentation. As you can see, it's something I'm incredibly passionate about. I sure hope that you found this valuable.